Okay, that's right. In today's video, we are going to go over and talk about transforming. Now, this is part one. We're going to talk about like an explanation of what transformers are, and then part two, we'll do some simple problems and examples for calculations with transformers. But today, we're going to go through an explanation. Now, you have probably seen many transformers in your life. In fact, you probably have many of them at home. You just don't know it. They're covered up. But if you drive around, you look around, you'll see a power station, you see a transformer that looks like this. This is a transformer. Inside here, there's a transformer. This this is a power line, utility line, utility pole, and inside each of these big cans here, there is a transformer. Okay, now also, you have probably seen many transformers at your house because you probably have something that looks like this, okay, inside here. What's inside here? Well, that's right, there's a bunch of electrical stuff, but there's a transformer inside there. You probably have something like this that you use at home to charge your phone or charge some other device, okay, or plug some other device into the wall, and here it has this thing. Well, what's in here? Let's just see what is in here. Oh my God, look at that. There is a transformer. Now, there's a bunch of other stuff in here, which is used to convert AC current to direct current, but that thing right there, that's a transformer. And what do transformers do? Well, let's see. I think maybe they transform. What do they transform? They transform one voltage to another, and that is a transformer. Also, maybe you have something like this. You've seen this is kind of old. This is used for traveling. You can plug this into the wall. You push the buttons, and you can convert one voltage to another. If you're in the United States, you have 120 volts. You come to Europe, you have 240 volts. This is the iron core, and on the inside here, there's the two windings that are wrapped up in, in tape, so they're insulated, and that device can be used to transform one voltage to another. That's what transformers do. They transform voltage one to another. If you look carefully on like something like this, or you have this kind of a thing, it's the same thing. This information, is a bunch of information on here, but right here it said if I put into this 100 to 240 volts, so I can use this in the United States where we have 120, or Europe where you have 230, 240, and you have alternating current. In Europe, we have 50 hertz frequency. In the United States, you have 60 hertz frequency, and you have 70 milliamperes. That if you put this in, then you will get out through that transformer, because that's what transformers do. They transform the voltage. You get out 5 volts uh, you get direct current and you get 0 0.5 amperes because this device, if you plug this device right into the wall with 100 uh, volts or 204, you'll fry that thing and you need to step that voltage down to 5 volts and 0 0.5 amperes. That's what transformers do. They transform voltage. Now, this is, I told you, maybe I mentioned this, this is the diagram you'll often see in a textbook. Okay, and transformers have a couple things about them. They are used to increase or decrease an AC voltage. Now, the transformer decreases or increases the voltage, and we have other things on here that will turn AC current into DC current, alternating into direct. But transformers consist of kind of, there's two things there and then another thing, so maybe three things. You have a, two coils of wire. And here is one coil, the red side and the blue side. The primary side, this is kind of the input and the output often, but we often say primary and secondary, has a coil of wire. We have a voltage across that coil of wire. We have a current through that coil of wire, and it has a number of windings. And this is what the coil of wire could look like. This is one we have at school to look like, but it basically looks like that coil of copper wire. And this one has 300 windings on it. Then we have the secondary side, which also has a coil, a voltage, a current, and a number of windings. This one, as you might notice, has 1,200 windings on there. And we have two coils. And the important thing about a transformer is those two coils, as it says on there, they're not electrically linked, but they're magnetically linked through a coil, through a coil, through an iron core like that. So I can take the top off. I can put one coil on. I can put the other coil on and I can charge, I can charge, I can put the top on like that and I can use that coil to transform the voltage or to transform the current also as we'll talk about from one to the other. These are not electrically linked, they're magnetically linked and if I plug them into an AC source, then the magnetic flux on one side will be equal to the magnetic flux on the other. We have this iron core, and that iron core can be used to kind of transfer the magnetic flux from one side to the magnetic flux on the other side, okay? And when we do that, if we have an ideal transformer, the magnetic flux on the primary side will be equal to the magnetic flux on the secondary side because all that magnetic flux from the primary side will travel through that iron core and be placed through that secondary side. Now, that is one of the most important things about transformers, that the flux is equal, because then we can use 
Faraday's law to come up with some nice equations for solving problems using transformers. So in the first case, we have the primary side. We can say that, according to Faraday's law, the induced EMF, the induced voltage on the primary side, is equal to minus the number of windings on the primary side times the change in the flux over time. Then we have the same equation which we can use for the secondary side, and we have the induced EMF on the secondary side is equal to minus the number of windings on the secondary side times the change in the magnetic flux over time. Now we said earlier because we have the magnetic core that the flux in the primary is equal to the flux on the secondary. So what we can do is we can divide one equation by the other using the secondary by the primary. These two values are equal to each other and therefore those two values can be canceled and we come up with a nice equation that relates the ratio of the voltages to the ratio of the number of windings. We have the ratio of the secondary to primary voltage is equal to the ratio of the secondary windings, the number of windings to the number of primary windings. Now oftentimes the thing that's unknown is in this case is the voltage on the secondary. So we can rearrange this equation to come up with a nice equation that we can use to solve for the voltage on the secondary side of that transformer. Usually, as I said, the input side, excuse me, the primary side is considered the input, and this is the output. So this equation and this equation are the same equation. This is a more general form. This is a more specific form solved for the voltage on the secondary. All right? Now, there is kind of a rule or two rules which you should remember for transformers and voltages. All right? That's related through these two equations. Okay? So here's the two equations again. And now you should remember this. If the number of windings on the secondary coil is greater than the number of windings on the primary coil, then the voltage across the secondary coil will be greater than the voltage on the primary coil. So if you want more voltage, then you put more windings on the secondary coil than you have on the primary coil, and that's called a step up. It steps the voltage up. Now, the opposite is also true. If the number of windings on the secondary coil is less than the number of windings on the primary coil, then the voltage across the secondary coil will be less than the voltage on the primary. So if you want less voltage, you want to step down, like something like this. When we go from 240 or 120, you plug this into the wall, this will give out 24 volts. So you want less windings on the secondary coil. All right, so you should remember for voltage, it's greater, greater, less, less, because as we'll see in just a moment, for current, it's the opposite, all right? So for current, we like to start off with the idea that we have an ideal transformer, which is 100% efficient, no loss through heat. Okay, and if we know that, then we can say that the power, P is for power, power on the primary side is going to be equal to the power on the secondary side, all right? And we convert, we convert. We calculate power as the current times the voltage. So current primary times voltage primary equals current secondary times voltage secondary. Now we can rearrange this equation so that we have that the voltage on the secondary divided by the voltage primary is equal to current primary divided by current secondary. Now this is the equation that we derived last slide on the last slide for the voltage. And you can see I have Vs divided by Vp, Vs divided by Vp. That means I can take this term out and substitute this term in. And now I have a very nice equation, just like I had for the voltages, I have a very nice equation that relates the ratio of the currents, primary and secondary, to the ratio of the windings, secondary and primary. And once again, we usually want to know what's the current on the secondary. We want to know what is the coming out of our transformer. We put something in, we want to know what's going to come out, and we can solve for the current on the secondary by the current in the secondary is equal to the number of windings on the primary divided by the number of windings in the secondary times the current on the primary, like that. And then, just like we did for the voltage, we can have these two rules, or this rule, so to speak, for our current and our relationship between windings on primary and secondary for the current. And now this time it says, if the number of windings on the secondary coil is greater, 
than the number of windings on the primary coil, then the current through the secondary coil will be less than the current in the primary coil. So if I put more windings on the secondary coil, I get less current through that coil. And then also, if the number of windings on the secondary coil is less than the number of windings on the primary coil, then the current through the secondary coil will be greater than the current through the primary coil. Okay, so remember last time for voltage it was greater and greater and less and less. This time it's more windings on the secondary, less current. Less windings on the secondary, more current. Okay, so please remember that those two things are opposite for the currents and the same for the voltages. Okay, so that is the basic explanation that I wanted to go over for transformers and how we derive the equations for transformers. In the next video, we will go over some simple problems for solving some equations and solving problems for transformers. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You should give me a thumbs up for this video. You should leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them how much you care. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.